Ready? Yeah. Right. Education. The pillar of a successful society, society, but also an opportunity for the government to paint their own hurtful narrative. Uh, to bend to bend education in their own favor. But students deserve better, and society deserves to be a good place for everyone to live in. For you and for everyone else. We're very proud to work. Alright. So today we bring a three-point case. First, our first uh, argument is about uh, the nature of teachers. The second argument is about uh, oppressive governments. And the third one is about how kids will learn alternative skills. Okay. But before moving into, into that, let's move into our model. So, firstly, when we say con contradict, we mean going against what is written in the curriculum and basically having the teacher teach what they believe they want to teach. Um, so basically they can go against the curriculum and teach what the, it is that they want to teach in their uh, subject. Okay. So, hurtful to society is defined as what the teacher believes to be hurtful to society. And third, thirdly, um, how this will carry out is the teacher has to say what they were supposed to teach in this class according to the curriculum, and then if they're going to contradict that, they're going, uh, and then they have to say what they were going to teach uh, before they teach what, they, what they're actually going to teach, and then if they're going to contradict, contradict that, they're going to teach why they think that's wrong. Right. So our burdens are um, that the teachers, that the teacher uh, should be given the right, and it's better for society that the teacher to be given the right to go against uh, curriculum and teach what they believe to be beneficial. And secondly, we believe that this will, make, uh, this will make education better because this will promote rational thought within children. Okay, so our first point is about the nature of teachers. So, okay. so basically, uh, in status quo, it is the state that decides what should be taught in school through deciding that what should be on the curriculum. So, uh, what this, how, why this is harmful is because the state has a certain incentive to teach stuff that isn't necessarily true to either further their narrative or hide away parts of history that, no, thank you, that wasn't necessarily beneficial for their government or their nation. So that way, the, uh, the government doesn't necessarily have an incentive to teach what is ex actually true, but they just have an incentive to get voters and get supporters for their government. Okay. So, how we change this is that now we allow teachers to go against the curriculum and actually actively choose what they think would be best for these children to actually learn and what they think would be best for society if these children actually learn, learn this stuff. Uh, and why this is better is because, no well, thank you, uh, teachers are inherently educated which in turn makes them more rational. So in this way, it, it, we believe it is better for the teacher to be the actor that decides uh, what should be taught in class because they are the ones who are able to adequately pick the more rational topics to be taught because they have the incentive to actually be those who teach. Now, why is this? Moving into our second subject. So, we believe that teachers have the moral obligation to teach what is rational and what is best for the, for the kids to learn. So basically, teachers are in the role in society that they are basically the best we have. It is their role to make sure that kids are informed, they, they have the knowledge they need to make smart decisions in society. Basically, if they believe that uh, what the state decides they should have to teach goes against that obligation, well, thank you, it is up to them, that is, it is their obligation uh, to contradict that and teach what they, should actually, what they actually believe uh, themselves to be true and be best for their children. So, basically, no thank you, the teachers are the better actor uh, to, cheat, to decide what should be taught, well, thank you, because and it's within the teacher's role that they themselves have to fulfill the purpose of teaching what is best for the children and teaching what is rational. Okay, so, I'm moving into our first sub-point about how this is better for the children. No, thank you. Because the children would leave the class better informed, uh, knowing both sides of the story, so to speak. Take, for example, America. In, U in the U.S., when, they did, when they're taught about World War II, it's basically painted from a very pro-U.S. perspective. They're taught, they're basically not taught about the bad shit that USS, USA done, has done, they're just taught about all of, the, all of USA's glorious victories and how they were really good in the war. If the kids actually know the both sides of the story, they'll be more educated about their own country and they'll be more, and they'll be more willing to form educated and rational, and rational per people in turn. Uh, but let's take another example. Let's take, for example, sex, sex ed in the, in the United States. 
Most teachers are very afraid and tend to shy away from the topic of sex education. Mo most American children only get two days of sexual of sex ed. Now, under this motion, teachers can decide that they want to give like more that they want to give more sexual education. So, in that way, uh, kids can actually go out and learn more about their bodies and, and biology, and then make informed choices about uh, about their sexual activities. Okay. So now let's move to our second point about oppressive governments and how governments can abuse this. Well, thank you. So as I always, as I already characterized, the governments have an incentive to paint a picture that's good for them to get as many people to follow their ideology and what they think. You no, know, thank you. Gets them supporters and furthers their government. Now, under our motion, teachers will be teachers will be able to see uh, teachers will be able to go against what they can basically see is blatantly false uh, information under oppressive governments. Um, take for example Turkey. Uh, in Turkey, Erdogan has put a lot of stuff into the curriculum uh, that basically teaches stuff that is factually wrong about um, no, thank you, Erdogan's mili military activities and the West military activity, painting them in a bad light and painting him as a glorious leader and their ideology as, as a country, as a, as a perfect one. Um, so basically, uh, that, so basically, now when we go against this, teachers can say, take this information, well thank you, that the see rationally is blatantly wrong, and teach to the kids the actual side of history. Now, why is this good? Well thank you. Two reasons. Uh, firstly, uh, firstly, we avoid blind patriotism. Take an, take an example with, with an oppressive, firstly, in, this, in the case of an oppressive regime, uh, we see we see that people won't just follow the ideology of this country. Which we, they won't just believe that Turkey is great. Everything we've been taught in school about them is basically true. But also, if we take the example of a Western country, no, thank you. Kids will be taught that not necessarily everything the U.S. does, and not necessarily everything Germany does, or any European country for that, for that sake, is good. Not everything they've done is good. And in this way, they can realize that nationalism isn't necessarily a good thing because they're shown the examples of their history that weren't perfect where the country actually did bad thing and this is good because if we avoid nationalism we avoid examples of racism people thinking that other, other opinions coming through their country is wrong because their country can only be good because they, never, they were never shown the bad side okay so third soft point how now we get a more informed society so society is more informed because they're not fed like blatantly false information, that not just being indoctrinated by the government to believe what they're told, and not just being indoctrinated to always believe what authorities is, is telling them. They are more informed to make their own choices, and in this way, we're sure that the population doesn't just follow the word of an oppressive regime. We're sure that when the population goes, goes out and vote, they're informed. They know that what they're being fed isn't necessarily true. They know to question their authorities, and in this way, we can make sure that oppressive regimes like ideologies aren't being furthered. And it is for those reasons that we are very proud to propose. Okay, thank the speaker for his speech, and we welcome up the first off here. here.
It's because we believe that a teacher's role is to teach a curriculum that has been decided by countless different people with countless different opinions, instead of imposing their own one opinion that is not their own one opinion on countless students. That we're very proud to oppose the motion today. As your first opposition speaker, I'll be clarifying our stance in this debate. I'll be going through a brief rebuttal of everything we've heard from proposition, and I'll be getting into our um, first two arguments today. First, um, the first on the, the role of the teacher, and secondly, on the harms to the cause. And my partner will be talking about the harms to the individual teacher later on. First, let's clarify our stance. We stand for a society that, um, that is able to protest different ideas, that is able to debate and bring up different ideas. We support healthy discussions. We support teachers being able to, um, say, bring up changes to a curriculum and to protest against the government. We do not support a teacher that just goes ahead with whatever they think and decides to teach it to the people without discussing it, without actually talking to anyone else. Okay, first let's get into some rebuttal. Now the first point we heard from opposition, no thinking, was on the nature of these teachers. They told you how the states, when states decide a curriculum, oftentimes they teach biased facts. Oftentimes they teach facts that they want to, because they want these kids to be voters for them. First of all, um, okay, first of all, why does the teacher get to decide that these facts are wrong? Why does the teacher get to decide that whatever the state is saying is wrong in the first place? And even if they do think it's wrong, again, we support them protesting the government. We support them bringing up these opinions in other ways, say, bringing it up in the school board, bringing it up in public to different people. We support the sharing of opinions, but we think that this curriculum has been decided for a reason. And for a reason, the teacher does not get to choose this. They told you, no, thank you, how teachers are the best people to make this decision because they are educated, because they are very, very rational. We think, you know, everyone has their personal biases, everyone has their personal opinions. Again, we think the people who make this curriculum oftentimes are the Ministry of Education, say, plus the input from the teachers of the school board. We think we get a much more um, all-inclusive decision, we get much more opinions actually being represented than this teacher who then all of a sudden wants to impose their own. They say how it's better for the kids, they get both sides of the story. We think for a teacher that thinks this curriculum is very helpful, they are much more likely to, say, present a very one-sided um, opinion of the story. Even if they briefly bring up, say, whatever the curriculum might say, we think they're much more likely to then impose their idea. No, thank you. Our second point was on oppressive governments. They said they wanted to paint the country as this perfect, uh, they want to paint this country as being perfect. We think, again, they only told us about the benefits. They never told us why teachers are the best actors to be trying to make this kind of change in society. We think, in fact, these teachers are much more likely to be fired, and much more likely to be made into a symbol in these countries where they're, say, punished really hard, and then people don't want to actually um, talk about these ideas, talk about this anymore. We think, oftentimes, it's much more likely that this whole cause is going to be shut down by the government in these oppressive regimes that they talk about. And again, we don't think it's right to just follow the opinions of this one person. And this leads me into our first two points. First, on the role of the teacher, but sure. In Turkey, Erdogan has banned all teaching of evolutionary theory. Do you think that teachers should completely ignore teaching their students about evolution? We think it doesn't actually help children learn more about evolution when this teacher is then fired, when people are now scared to talk about evolution at all because they think, look what this Look what has happened to this teacher when no one is, dares to bring up this idea at all. We don't think it actually helps. And if this country likes, um, doesn't talk about evolution at all, we don't think this one teacher will be able to make such a huge impact either way. Okay, first, the role of the teacher. Principally, we tell you that this teacher is someone who is hired by the government to teach its curriculum. The teacher is supposed to submit to the system in return for, say, being paid, in return for being hired by the government. It is their role to actually teach this curriculum. They are hired, they are chosen for this job because of the fact that, because of the fact that we believe that they can teach this set curriculum well. We don't think then they should just go into here and change things up however they please. We think, moreover, that the idea of something being harmful is incredibly subjective. Why should a teacher get to decide, not for their personal opinion, but for, say, 30, 40 groups, 40 children, what is wrong and what is right? We tell you again that state curriculums involve a lot of discussion, involve a lot of time and energy that is put into it by a lot of people with a lot of different opinions. We think they take into account oftentimes the different opinions that are being discussed. We think these decisions.
decisions and the curriculums they end up with end up being ones that are much more all-encompassing and ones that are much more modern. We think, moreover, there's no real way to actually decide what is good in a society. But I suppose the best way to decide what is good is what the majority of people or what society believes is good. We think then, if this idea truly is something that is worth being talked about, this idea should first be discussed by society before the teacher imposes it directly onto the teacher. <coughs> and finally, we think the purpose of the education system is to present a um, is to present a curriculum with, say, as little bias, as little individual bias as possible, so the children can decide for themselves what they think is right and wrong. And again, for a teacher who believes so strongly in one thing, they are much more likely to impose a one-sided view of different circumstances. And our, this leads me into my second point today about the harms to the cause itself. First of all, what is most, most likely going to happen to this teacher? We think most likely this teacher is going to be fired. Why is this? Because oftentimes there's going to be parental pressure that exists. We don't think parents are going to be very happy when their kid comes back, like when little Johnny, for example, comes home spurring some kind of random rhetoric or some kind of extreme rhetoric that they don't believe in. We think the impact of this is oftentimes now these teachers are not able to advocate for any kind of internal change. They no longer have a seat, say, at the school board where they can bring up different opinions. They can bring up this idea for it to be discussed. <coughs> We think we lose out on this opinion altogether. This is very harmful. But moreover, we think school boards are more likely to hire homogenous teachers. They don't want to go through this hiring, firing process over and over again. They don't want to deal with angry parents who are unhappy with them. We think oftentimes they will only choose people that they're sure will agree 100 percentively with the things that they're talking about. Why is this harmful? This leads to less diversity within teachers. This leads to less um, teachers actually bring up different opinions in classrooms. We think, moreover, that it actually harms the reputation of a teacher a lot. This teacher is now seen as someone who is unreliable, someone who contradicts the government. We think the government, then, is less likely to want to hear out the opinions that these, this teacher is saying. Perhaps it is a social issue. Perhaps it is a cause that this teacher is talking about. This entire cause is branded as something that is unwilling to work with the government, as a group that perhaps isn't willing to cooperate in any way. We think the parents are unlikely to hear out these teachers that are teaching random things to their children, the government is unlikely to do so as well. We think this leads to absolutely no mobilization for this cause, so the government doesn't want to work with you at all. And even in extreme situations like we talked about, we think, again, the teachers are much more likely to be made into a symbol where people now are afraid to talk about this whatsoever. We talk about that we support different alternatives where, say, you advocate directly for the government, where you bring up different ideas into kids in discussions. I think there are much better ways of creating change than the idea that they talk to you about. So for all of these reasons, we're very proud to oppose. and I welcome up the second prop. So opposition brought up a, a very interesting idea in this debate. So they said that teachers are hired by the government to do what the government says. And that was your principle of justification. But wait a minute. Does that mean that in all cases, if you are employed by the government, you have to do exactly what that government says. Does that mean that if you're doing a military invasion where you're oppressing children and women, uh, and women, or if you're oppressing minorities in society and you're uh, <clears throat> and you're hired by the government as a militarist, does that mean you have to do that? And does it mean that in no cases these <clears throat> actions should not? prevent and stop doing this when it's so morally wrong, we need to ha have an explanation for this in their second speak, in their second speech. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, I have two things for you today. First of all, I'll deal, deal with some rebutting as a rebuilding, and secondly, I'll send our third and final substantial point. So let's get into some of the ideas of today's debate. We gave you the idea of uh, the oppressive governments, how the oppressive government has in it its incentives um, that are that is incentive to do things that are false and that are bad. 
And the only thing we actually said to this was that teachers should bring it up elsewhere. But we tell you that it's more effective if these teachers, um, if these teachers do it in the classroom, because the classroom is where the children are incentivized to actually learn. That's where they're supposed to learn, and that's where you can have so many children in the same classroom. And that, and because these children are the ones that are supposed to shape the future. So if you can have some, a teacher that's in the classroom with the children and having and, and have and to have several hours with these children, you have a much better possibility to actually learn these children things and new view to have by just saying it in the media or somewhere else. And their second response to this was that teachers are not necessarily better. And that's a really good lead up to the next idea that we discussed today. Because we discussed, are teachers actually better or not? We clearly stated in our first argument that teachers are better because they are more educated in specific subjects and therefore have a better possibility to learn to children about specific things. And, what they, only said, and what they only said to this idea was that no, everyone has personal biases. And actually, we do agree. Everyone has uh, has personal biases. And when I say everyone, yes, I do include teachers. But first of all, we tell you that we we might see that we have that we don't have a lot as much benefits in the developed world as we do in the developing world. But now let me now tell you why it's why these teachers are actually better and are actually more liberal and will teach children things that are better than the governments. Because we say that in the developed world, teachers are held accountable for what they're doing by the children. Because when a children hear something in class, he's likely to go home. And when he goes home, the, their, his parents will come to him and they will ask, what did you learn today? And if he says something that's completely wrong, or said that my teacher learned me that evolution does not exist, then the parents will come to the school and actually and, the, and discuss with them what is going on, and that will have consequences for the teachers. But now let me tell you all the benefits that we have in developing world about uh, <clears throat> all the teachers that we have, all the benefits that we have in the, in the developing world by giving more power to the teachers rather than the governments, because we think that the teachers are so much better in this case, because we already told you that governments have an incentive to strengthen their position. And this could, for example, be done by changing a historical event or act or something. And teachers are much more educated and more in specific subjects, and they have a much broader knowledge about uh, history, and they don't have the same incentive to strengthen the uh, position of the government. Therefore, the teachers are much more likely to actually teach the truth. But, and they have given their entire life uh, to the children. They have spent years becoming a teacher. And when they have spent years becoming a teacher, they did it because they wanted to help the children to actually make it a better place. Because otherwise, they could have just spent years and years doing something else that could also have earned them much more money. They have an incentive to actually teach the children good things because they have devoted so much of their lives to do it. And we, think, and we say, furthermore, educated citizens, such as teachers, are statistically less likely to be biased and racist and so forth because of some social um, things and so forth. But even though that some uh, teachers are um, are racist, racist, it's still so much better to have these teachers uh, doing what they want than have the government to doing it in a developing country where the government is oppressive. Because these, this uh, government can put things into the minds of children that are be so much more harmful overall than a racist opinion. And the reason why we think that comparatively it's so much more harmful that a uh, country can do this rather than a teacher is because a country can do it for all teachers, for all curriculums in the entire country. And even though we have some few uh, biased teachers, it will not be as harmful as the entire government doing it in uh, certain curriculums. Now, I already dealt with the fact that they said that teachers should already should just do what the government says to do, which is their principal justification. So, with that said, let's look uh, at our third substantial point. But before, yes? See, in the developing world, the general public say doesn't believe in evolution. Why will this one teacher's like, teaching about evolution suddenly change everything? Will these parents still protest if they don't believe it? First of all, we haven't heard from you an example where the entire population does not believe in evolution. And then, secondly, we believe 
that a teacher can actually uh, help make this uh, this disbelief even better and actually create a better circumstances by teaching children and people actual truth and because they have had so much more knowledge during their uh, education. Now, our third argument of today is about how we encourage free thinking among the children. So, in the status quo, the state has immense power in terms of in terms of the curriculums that the children are learning. And in most countries, states can change curriculums as often as they want, especially in developing countries. And we think that's very harmful because it lets governments uh, create negative changes that benefit their position, as I already discussed. And these can be things such as historical events. And this motion it encourages free thinking to fight against these oppressive governments and these fallbacks. So, first of all, how do we create this free thinking uh, which I'm talking about? We're creating it because teacher will ch choose to do things that are against... Te teachers who choose to do this are obviously against what the government says. And therefore, a teacher is showing the children that it's okay to question the state, that it's okay to question the authority, authority and what the government actually is saying in this curriculum. And therefore, the children will, will realize that it's actually possible to question what they're saying and go against with, with all these things. And now, secondly, how does this lead to a to let a less powerful, oppressive state? Given the analysis that I just gave, the children will be more inclined to question polit polit politicians' authorities, and furthermore, it will spur a debate in society because more people will be inclined to question the actions of the government. And this debate is what has led to better democracies in so many countries. And we give you an example of this because in Turkey, Erdogan he removed the evolution theory from the cur curriculums. And that gets so much more attention than it had, than had, had it happened in any other country. And that happened because the educational system was already free and was already, li already liberal before that. It was much better than it was in the developing world. So ladies and gentlemen, we tell you that we give you a society where we can fight against oppressive governments and give much better and much, much better information to the children. Both conversation. gentlemen, we support a system in which teachers can still be employed and help help fulfill and, um, and move forward their movements in an internal fashion. We support a system in which these teachers still have an influence in the classroom because they're still in that classroom and not fired when they're inside proposition side of the house. Today in my speech, I'm going to be doing one thing for you. Oh, two, three things for you. Firstly, um, feeding all we've heard so far from side proposition inside the house. Secondly, getting into some reconstruction of my partner's points. And finally, getting into a final idea about individual harms. But before I do any of that, let's take a quick look at what side proposition has tried to tell you so far in this debate. So first of all, their first speaker comes up here and basically talks to us about this idea of the nature of these teachers, right? He talks to us about how the state has the incentive to hide things and how teachers are educated and how they should be allowed to make these, these decisions on their own. A couple of responses we gave to you. My partner addressed this idea about how uh, and questioned why these teachers should be the ones to decide, which they never responded to. She also told you about this alternative of bringing these issues up in, in an internal way to change the real curriculum, which they also gave us no response to. But furthermore, we would tell you in our side house that another response we would give to that point is the idea that if these teachers are fired, if the government does not want to employ these teachers anymore, their presence will not even exist in these classrooms. They will not have any sway on the, on the opinions of these children anymore, and we think that's even more harmful. 
Furthermore, their side of the house never actually analyzes the fact of how these teachers are actually going to be effective in teaching these students about these ideologies, right? We know that they actually give us full analysis on how just this teacher alone will be able to, to override all this, the societal pressures and all the other influences from, um, from things outside of school. Furthermore, we tell you on our side house that most of these teachers who would actually go ahead and do this are people who are the most irrational. These are the people who are the most controversial and rebellious to the point in which they would actually go ahead and go against the government to, to try to change this um, curriculum in their classroom, right? We tell you this is harmful because of the fact that these people are the most of the times have the most uh, controversial view on these issues. We, this is harmful because of the fact that now people will be less likely to actually buy into this and will actually think of this movement as a rebellious one. Furthermore, they tell you about this other point on their side that was about an oppressive government. They basically talk to us about how governments are very manipul uh, manipulative and how that's very bad. They give us this example, which I find very ironic, of Turkey. They tell us about how in Turkey um, um, there are very, there's a very bad curriculum and how teachers should be allowed to go against it, right? We think it's ironic to the point in which we would tell you that the Turkey's president has, has arrested and killed many people for acting out against his government, even killing them for, for, for um, spreading things that are bad about their president, right? We would tell you on our side of the house that these people and the teacher and the students on their side of the house will not be able to think or even learn anymore because they will be dead. We think on their side house that these, these teachers will have no more influence at all over this curriculum. Furthermore, they basically throw us this other third point about this, these more skilled and more informed, basically the same thing as your second point, and I think we've already dealt with that very well. Okay, let's get into some construction of our partner's ideas. Basically, she brings to you this idea, which they never actually refuted, about the role of the teacher. She tells you about how and questions why you get to decide what's good. And we think on our side house that the government and the collective um, ideas of the teacher is, is probably the most unbiased of the curriculum. They never actually adequately respond to this. Furthermore, the most essential point that my partner brings up in her second idea was given no response at all. Basically, this idea about how even if this is works, it's bad for the cause. She explains to you explicitly why now these teachers will get fired and will have no more say at all. She also tells you about how now the school boards will just stop employing these, these teachers, right? These school boards will now realize that it's a bad idea to employ teachers who don't agree with them at all. Teachers who are going to be rebellious and hard to control. They gave us no response to that at all. And finally, my partner brought to you this idea that is very essential in this debate about how it actually gives and harms the reputation of these liberal ideologies or these good ideologies. Because now it's seen as an intrusive part, an intrusive movement, we hear no response to means, we think that's a very important part of this debate. Finally, let's get into our final contention, basically on individual harms. What I'm going to prove to you at this point, I'll take you in a second, is why even if this is the case, and even if this works, all these benefits outweigh the individual harms that come, come with this motion. How do you disagree? Do you seriously believe that the best way to handle an extremely authoritarian regime is not to dissent, but just to completely accept all the policies handed out by authoritarian leaders? We don't want, we, we told you in our model like, that we don't want to accept just what the government is saying. We just don't want, we just don't think this is the right mechanism to do so. We told you on our side house that we support things like making internal changes in the curriculum and having this influence and this voice over the school board, but not this teacher acting out on their own and getting fired and having no say at all in the future. Let's get further into my point, right? We would tell you, what is the, what does contradicting the curriculum actually do? With even their side house, these teachers will now be fired and be pu publicized as teacher or people who are criminals and unworthy members of society. Um, other than the probability of jail and punishment by these oppressive regimes that they talk about, another impact is that they will no longer be actually employed down the line, right? They will have no more sway over anything, and, and we think this is um, essentially harmful. Furthermore, we would tell you on our side house that I think that we have a duty to ourselves, right? To keep, a, uh, to keep food on the table and for survival, we've done our side house. This teacher has a duty to protect their own job and keep this means of survival and this means of food. Furthermore, we will tell you on our side house that um, why is this very important? We will tell you that the most important thing is to help yourself before you help others. We think that let's we shouldn't do something a little bit scandalous. 
for the cause of your own survival, your own personal um, life, right? Furthermore, the final thing I want to quickly touch on is these social harms. We would tell you in our ethos that what it looks like to be shunned by society is not very pleasant. We would tell you in our ethos that when you actually um, uh, use this, these controversial ideas at school, not only will you be shunned by the staff, who will no longer want to cooperate with you, who will no longer want to share your ideas, who will no longer want to talk about these ideas. Furthermore, you'll be shunned by parents, right? When this is an essential factor in this debate because of the fact that the parents have put their trust into the, the hands of this one teacher. This is a group of, I don't know, 30 kids or like the entire school whose parents have put their trust into this one teacher who ends up using his own opinions in the classroom. We think these parents will not be very happy about this and will be mad at this teacher, right? Furthermore, we think that society as a whole will now not see this person as a very as a, as a brave figure that they might make you believe. Society will see this person as what is publicized as, as a criminal, as someone who is rebellious and going in, uh, um, against the government, right? Furthermore, ladies and gentlemen, we will tell you in our side house that we support the change in curriculum, but we don't think this is the right mechanism to do so. Like independent from politics from governments. Okay. Lastly, 
Uh, we also think that generally speaking, teachers are like their ideas are also shaped by the curriculum. They're also shaped by the education that they take, right? Which are like fundamentally government ideas. That the reason why teachers come to conclusions that the government is wrong is because they critically evaluate those ideas despite the fact that they've been indoctrinated. And that's usually why teachers, at least in like third world countries and like present regimes, tend to be right when they're dissent when they're dissenting uh, from these governments. Okay. So they okay, they also give us this idea that like teachers have this responsibility to protect their own jobs, right? That this is just completely insane, right? Considering that basically like considering that if you drag this principle out, then every single citizen like in the world in general should not dissent at all when you experience oppressive regimes and oppressive policies, right? We think they should answer the question whether or not, for example, a Syrian rebel shouldn't rebel against the Syrian government. Because, right, you could say that that person has a responsibility to feed his family, but might, you could also say that it's the right thing to do to dissent against an authoritarian regime that's extremely oppressive, right? And that they have to answer that question to, make the compare, to uh, extend their principle. No, thank you. Okay, so secondly about okay, so second theme about the impacts of their ideas. Okay, so firstly about the harms uh, okay, so they gave us this idea about how this will basically harm the teachers and get them fired. Okay, so the first idea was that they'll get fired because of parental oppression. Firstly, we think that generally speaking, teachers are liberal, right? They're generally speaking a lot more progressive than society, and they generally speaking tend to appreciate ideas that are more liberal and left wing uh, in society, right? We think that is a fundamental characteristic that is true of teachers in almost every single country. Okay, because that the reason why that is important is because there's a large group of those teachers who are going to be more critical towards oppressive regimes' policies and towards oppressive regimes' ideas in the curriculum, right? When there are a lot of teachers that are critical of these ideas, clearly the school cannot fire, like, I don't know, 20% of all teachers, right? Because on our side of the house, that the majority, the vast majority of teachers who do not agree with these ideas would dissent and would not uh, teach those in the curriculum, right? Clearly that is just not practically possible, right? Uh, secondly, we also think that parents in general are like okay and generally speaking accepting towards children being introduced to ideas that are contradictory of their beliefs, right? And generally speaking, like we know that in school you you're just taught things that are not necessarily like in accordance with your parents' beliefs. Um, okay, so e but even if it's true that some teachers may face firing, I think that's just more of an incentive to try and like present their ideas with modesty rather than like in radicalized extreme versions. We don't really think that that's an incentive for the teachers to completely not present these ideas at all. Okay. Uh, and lastly, we also think that to a large extent, the reason these teachers are not going to get fired because usually this involves not teaching ideas that are on the curriculum rather than teaching different ideas that are on the curriculum. For example, uh, on Erdogan's curriculum, it basically like says that the West is like extremely hostile, all those kind of things, that the West the military uh, is very hostile towards Turkey. Teachers could leave out teaching that idea, which basically means that kids wouldn't be exposed to the idea without teaching them contradictory ideas, which means that their parents wouldn't kind of find out. It's my point. Okay. They also they gave this idea about how school boards are basically a, uh, school boards will pick homogenous teachers rather than uh, at least like rebellious teachers, right? We don't really think that like even if it's true, then like these homogenous like even if it's true, that doesn't really change anything because. On their side of the house, these teachers are going to like, teach these homogenous curriculums anyway, so it doesn't really make a difference, right? Okay, so next point about authoritarian regime, right? Okay, so they basically base their entire case on the premise that the best way to handle authoritarian regimes is to try and be polite, to try and speak to them like a pedagogical manner. We think that's the opposite of what's true, right? We think that in general, speaking historically, what has faced, what has been the best way to tackle authoritarian regimes? to introduce people to new ideas that are contradictory to the ideas that the authoritarian regimes are trying to indoctrinate people with in general, right? And that that's generally speaking what's historically has been true, right? With that, for example, we think there are plenty of examples where the people have generally speaking not been very critical towards the authoritarian regimes and there's reached extents that are extremely horrible. Okay, we think that given, uh, before this, yes. Perhaps something else can be done against authoritarian regimes. But if you as a teacher being an active descent means that you're going to be arrested and all of your followers and students are also going to get harmed, is that necessarily going to make things better? We don't necessarily think that the government has to like has the resources to uh, arrest like 15 to 20 percent of teachers, right? Like generally speaking, authoritarian regimes don't have the resources to, to arrest every single teacher, every single person in the country that descend that don't appreciate their ideas, right? It's not like governments can't actually function function like that. Okay. 
So generally speaking, we believe that when these students are introduced to ideas that are contradictory to uh, the ideas that the governments are trying to indoctrinate them with, they're going to be more critical of government policies, they're going to be more critical of like very traditional conservative beliefs that are clearly holding back these countries and holding these uh, dictators to power. Because that is extremely crucial in this debate, right? Even if it's true that a teacher only gets to teach these ideas for like two months and then gets um, and then gets like fired, right? But that that will still be sufficient in some regard to install some of what the, like, these ideas in, entail to students uh, in these schools. Okay, because we stand for societies that are more inclusive and liberal, and because we think that the best way to handle authoritarian regimes is to completely accept everything they do, but to rather criticize them and to explore new critical ideas. And because we stand on the teacher's side, and because we stand against the authoritarian regimes, we're proud to propose. Mr. Speaker, so far in this debate, we allow politicians to get away too much with their characterization that one teacher dissenting from school curriculum will lead to massive revolution that will change dictators and remove them from power. What I will show in this speech is number one, why if their characterization is in developed countries, number one, isn't the majority of cases at all, but number two, will be even more ineffective and will hurt their cause and try to hold these governments accountable even more. So, two things in this speech. Number one, whether or not this is effective, and number two, what is the role of a teacher? Before that, one extraneous case for you to We noticed a curious case shift by the third speaker where they say, no, 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 this is not just one teacher trying to do things, this is a collection and a group of teachers dissenting this government. Number one, being a little bit meta, this motion states that this helps us a teacher, so we are talking about one teacher. But secondly, even if we're talking about like an entire school where every single teacher wants to send this government, we're going to show you why our arguments will still stand and can, can, will still consistently show you why you will not cement this type of accountable change within these governments. So, first of all, first response, first thing, why do we think this is not ineffective? The first thing I want to do is look at the characterization. Because they say that in these societies, you know, kids are going to go home and go to their parents and say, oh, we learned about how evolution is not real, we learned about all these things, and our people will just accept these new ideas and so on. Look, if, if these are societies where people are willing to accept these different views, and if these are diverse societies with different views already, it is unlikely that these curriculums are going to be so extremist and so false in the first place. Because if they want to characterize that the people and parents in in this, in this country are willing to accept different views and different ideas, it is likely the fact that there's already a type of accountability process to make that curriculum accountable. What does this mean? This means that the type of world that they, are, they have to defend are societies that are much more extreme, so that, so that the curriculums themselves can be more extreme. They have to necessarily defend countries, like developing, like, like developing countries that have like, have like systems of propaganda, where you can't necessarily just simply, you know, have your kids say this this is something I learned at school, and this is how you get the type of revolutionary changes under their seventy house. Okay, so if these are extreme societies where there's such entrenched belief in a, in a by the trans government by like an oppressive government, why does this policy make things worse in terms of accountability? Number one, we've told you that this hurts that, that you'll be shunned as a teacher and this necessarily hurts your reputation. Because in their example about nationalism, there are literally people in the United States who who are getting death threats because they think that, oh, we need to hold the United States accountable. That's the type of thing that happens. Even in a democratic state, like the democratic country, like the United States, imagine what happens in Turkey, in North Korea, or even China, when you're in active dissent against the government, right? In these countries, people, there's propaganda, there's cult of personality. Societies and people are already entrenched and influenced in a way that's, that, that's naturally biased and favored to that government. This dissent is not going to be seen as a revolutionary leader that we should all fall up to, but in fact, a person who's actually challenging a norm that people are so used to, which means that this person doesn't necessarily have that legitimacy and gains the accountability that they talk about. But second, oh my god, in developing states, like literally you're going to get persecuted and arrested. Like there are literally Chinese children during the Chinese Cultural Revolution. There was a child who went to a washroom. But because he didn't have any toilet paper, he used a newspaper with a picture of Mao on it to like wipe his um, 
Yeah. And what happened was that he was literally taken away, sent into a detention center, and his parents were literally taken out. This is a true story. This is the type of harm that happens in developing states because authoritarian and the oppressive governments are unaccountable to a point where any type of teacher or any type of dissent, they try to crack down immediately. No thank you. So, we think, that, so like when they say, so when they say that, oh, this will lead to more information and more accountability. No, people are going to view you as a traitor. Governments want to see you as an active dissent and an active threat to, really, you know, to your regime and your stability in power. They, they're going to arrest you, they're going to torture you, they're going to send you to prison. And when I, talk, when I talk about Turkey, right, like literally Erdogan has arrested so many people that they have to release some other prisoners because their prisons are literally overcrowded. That's the type of harm they have to deal with. Because U.S. teachers are not going to be able to send in these type of children. You're going to be arrested, and in fact, all your students are going to be harmed too. What type of, like, that's so messed up. You're going to be culpable for so many of your children who like being harmed by the oppressive governments too, if they're becoming like, anti or anti-oppressive sure. government. So we don't think this is necessarily yes. Our authoritarian countries are ever going to become democratic and ever going to overthrow their leaders if literally no one dissents. Okay, so number one, we don't think, number one, there are better alternatives and other alternatives to get accountability. Like with culture, we can get internal change within the government. Like we don't have, we don't necessarily need to support one teacher like being an active dissent. But you know what? Even if we don't get active change on our side, on our side, it's not our burden to prove to you why we can get rid of air or hold governments accountable. It is only our burden to prove to you why this. We, it's our burden to prove to you why this policy will necessarily make situations worse. And I think we have done so, so done that so far. So what is this, what is the the previous now side culture? What is this? Mean? This means that you're never going to be able to cement any of that type of change. So even if proposition rights say that, oh, something must be done. If this policy doesn't achieve that, then we shouldn't support it. The second, they need to deal with the much more majority of cases, the much more likely cases. Because in that, because in developed countries, that's much more likely going to happen. In, in developed countries, where you're not going to be arrested, where you're not going to be actively persecuted. But in developed countries, and in like much more accountable and liberal democracies, that is countries where you can actively get change in systems of government, because curriculums are designed by different teachers and collaborated by different people, where they're much more diverse. And when you're a teacher, you have an active say and you can contribute to the construction of that curriculum, and, that, and have legitimacy and have power in controlling you know, what is being taught and making sure that that is diverse. So, we just think that on the theme of effectiveness, even if they want to base it on developing countries, that just makes it so, so, so much harder for you to play, cement in any type of accountability change, any change in free speech, and the calling accountability. And that won't happen under our, their side of the house. The second thing I want to look at is the role of teachers. Because the central claim proposition tries to give to you is that, oh, states are so bad, they're so biased, and so on. Number one, again, we think that states can be accountable. There are different teachers who are in construction of that curriculum. This can be an accountable process that we can make better to ensure that there are different views that is more moderate, that is more diverse, not necessarily in trying in to get more votes. But secondly, even if not, even if like these curriculums are ter terrible, there's no reason why these teachers are any better, right? Because we think that, let's say you have a teacher in church who wants to teach out, oh, everyone's an awful person. You don't, you're not necessarily sitting in an objective education, and we think that if you want to like be objective, you need to teach like the good things that Erdogan has done, and the bad thing is Erdogan has done. But if you were having a teacher who's actually descent of Erdogan, you're not going to get any of that objective and objective like free speech in terms of discourse with different views as well. And this is the most ridiculous idea coming from their side. They say that all teachers are progressive. All teachers will do this. All will do these good things. That is not true. There's no reason why like all teachers will be progressive, or all teachers will necessarily want to you know hold governments accountable and do these and do these type of things. Right? We don't think it's necessarily a case that all teachers will simply just want to you know do good and moral things. If that if such thing even exists. Okay. The last thing I want to know is the, our argument about why this, there's an individual duty and why we also have a role to. Because we told you that, number one, there's a role to submit to a system because you're in employment, you're paid by the system. We're not saying that, oh, you're like a slave and a robot controlled by the government and you have to do whatever they want. But there's a certain line where, like, you, where you shouldn't just act and just and contradict whatever you want and do whatever you want when you're literally working and employed as part of that government. But second, we think that there's an individual duty to solve that as really possible. Because insofar as perhaps there's a duty to get this change. Maybe there's a, maybe things are bad, but insofar as this policy will get you arrested, harm your family, and harm everyone else that you care about, this is a pretty significant harm that you also have to weigh out. That's not something that we can morally, necessarily morally culpable for. So we do think that these harms and these individual duties in your role as a teacher matters. The last thing I want to note is that even if you bought all your principles, that is your inner role as a duty as in your teacher to do this, all this argumentation falls at the point where it proves to be that practically this won't cement any change and in fact make situations for. We think this is an atrocious policy that will hurt teachers and students. Thank you.
gosh, well, I've been looking Is that it way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Well, it's, it's lightning. There's lightning. So, presumably, there's like some rain, too. Yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, it sounds like typhoons. Okay. Uh, welcome up, Angelina. Off the bar. Stand on the top of the building. What is there? Rain. What did you do to our water? What did you do to our water? It's just in our room. Like, I forgot to bring it. I'm sorry. I tried. If you want water, you can go into. Not now. Guys, not now. This is good as to be. Yeah, yeah. Let's go and do it. Just 
the fact that there can be a lot of propaganda in these countries, that these governments are much more likely to again crack down on them. For all of these reasons, we're very proud of you. Thank you. All right, we welcome up the final speaker of the round, here, here. So, opposition based their entire case on that teachers are not capable of doing this, and even if they are, this is not the right place to do that. And that means, if we have proven them wrong in these two things, we take today's debate. And I'll spend this reply speech on telling you how we actually pr have proven this, this to you during this debate. So let's start with the teachers, which has been the most important part of this debate, because both teams have realized that their actions, that the, the actions of the teachers are the ones determining the quality of the education. And therefore, what you have to weigh as a just today is what team can achieve the best teachers delivering the best information. And now, firstly, in terms of teachers, we told you that if a teacher in the developed world taught something completely wrong, they would be held accountable by the parents because the children will go home and, te uh, and tell it to the parents or the parents will ask the children. And they never actually uh, addressed this. And we, tell you, we told you that this will happen because in the developed world, uh, parents are mu have a much uh, broader knowledge and much, and much uh, more general knowledge and therefore it's easier for them to realize if the teachers are actually doing things that are racist and terror. And now, in the developing world, which we talk so much about today, I literally gave you six ideas why teachers are so much better. And we need to acknowledge that they actually did say that some of these teachers are racially biased, and okay, and, and have some other small problems. And we actually agreed to this. But we tell you that teachers are so much better than your passive group. With oppressive regimes in the developing world in almost every case, actually in every case. And now let me now tell you why the teachers are, are better once again and remind you what we told you during the day. We told you that a government has an incentive to strengthen their own position, which the teachers do not have. And the teachers are much more educated, know much more about the subject, they know much more than the oppressive governments. And even if some of the teachers, these teachers are, race, racial, or are, are racist and so forth, it's still much better to have this one than a government in a developing country enforcing things nationally to all schools and all children in that country. Therefore, we have proven to you today that teachers are, can actually do this and much better than anyone else. So, with that said, if we, not, if we have also proven to you that it's the right place to create the change, we will take this debate. Because what they fundamentally said in terms of the right place is that this is not the right place to create, to create change in terms of oppressive governments. But then, where is the right place? And why is that other place and that other, that other alternative that they never actually talk about? Because they never gave us another way to fix this. They never gave us an alternative, but they said a hundred times that we have an alternative. But where is that alternative? I wish I could have heard that from them in their next speech, but unfortunately there are no speeches left. So they said that we should uh, talk to the governments instead and create internal change. And, 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 and that this was the better alter alternative. But my third speaker already told you how we would never create a change in that way and, uh, and admitted that yes, might, there might be some people that will be imprisoned and some people that will be harmed by doing it on our side of the house. But is that really worse than keeping an oppressive government in a country? Because if you listen closely to their way and to their rhetoric, they're actually saying that they would not have a democratic revolution if it means that some people are going to get imprisoned. They're weighing the harm to these few people as much higher than actually create creating a democracy in a country. And if you actually listen to that closely, that means that they uh, regret democratic revolutions during the Arab Spring because people were imprisoned and even some people were killed. So if you believe now that teachers are better than oppressive governments and that it's okay to cause harm to a few teachers to remove an, an oppressive government as we did in the Arab Spring, you'll cho choose proposition today. <laughs>